All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you are African American National Black, um, HIV AIDS Awareness Day is for you. And this day offers the latest updates on fight against the infection and the disease. Um, the MBHAA Day occurs every Friday, um, February rather, 7th, with inspirational stories of survivors suggestions on how to make healthier, more positive lifestyle choices, and details on the latest innovation in education and treatment. And this day speaks to the resilient spirit of, of strength, faith, and hope in the black community. So this is actually specifically for people in the black community living with HIV or AIDS. You know how it's so interesting that I just see people still just go around doing all sorts of things unprotected and I'm wondering it's like it's like you will don't forget to <laughs> HIV no get cure. I mean there was another I think I saw recently was it last week a failed uh what's it called? Another failed drug um cure for HIV. I, I read it somewhere, I can't remember where I saw it but they've been people have been trying and trying and trying to see if they can get, you know, a permanent cure for AIDS. So I mean the best you can do, I would say, for raising awareness, remember the rules, you know, because that time we were always very careful and conscious, but now we still see people sharing clippers, we still see people um, practicing unhealthy, safe, I mean, unhealthy sex life where you're just sleeping around with everybody. And you still see people, you know, ladies, you know, the salon going to, you know, using sharp objects and all of that. So it's a very scary thing, but hey, God help us. <laughs> <laughs> people still do blood um blood work yeah mm -hmm. and so people even do drugs and they share, and they syringe. share, needles, share syringe terrible terrible practice all right so who are we starting with mary let me start with you uh minister of works and housing babatini fashola has said that he himself does not have cash and i'm just wondering <laughs> Because I came on air as well to say that we're going to a cashless society, but it seems like even the government is not ready for this cashless society. So, I mean, clearly there's something wrong and we need help. It's an nice opportunity for everybody to say they don't have cash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, well, know, we know that's a lie because some, something happened to me today when I was trying to uh, put air in my tire. I only had my last one thousand, I'll be saving that money. I had to give it to the boy. Thankfully, he had, but he had a 200 naira new note. He it said he changed. has, he has, he said he, has he said he had new note and old note. But the change he gave me was 200 naira new note, 500 naira old note, eh? and the 100 naira. So I said, <laughs> Oga, okay, you don't have 500 naira new note. He said, Madam, it's 1,000 naira new note. Like, what you just gave me is what I have. So I said, if you give me one five, I'll give you 1,000. I said, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Even for Canada, that don't top you, especially. No, yeah. Mine, I had to leave my money because he didn't have any. He only had 500 naira and I had only 1,000 naira. It's very painful. And no, so what you can do, you just it's book it. <laughs> no, no, you book. It's true now. What I had planned was if he didn't have change, I'll book just tell him that. You book now. With so him and come back. Uh, four more visits and my money. So it's, it's like I'm paying an advance. I, I will not leave my money with you now. Okay, you see, we're getting innovative, right? Eh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You, no, you have to. If not, you will probably oh. lose all your cash. Yes, you will. You go out to buy something and you don't have because the 500 naira notes and the 200 naira notes are quite scarce. So yeah. mostly what you will see will be the 1,000. And then you give someone 1,000 and maybe what you're buying is like maybe 800. There's 200. The guy tells you I don't have to. That thing is always annoying. I'm like... That's why I do transfer. I would normally leave that but now that there's no cash, I want my. <laughs> I almost want to. I will not normally leave back. anything. Give me back my change, please. Because if I gave you money short of your two hundred, short of of two hundred, will you accept? It? No, they wouldn't. So it's it's a very horrible uh, spirit yeah. that we practice in this country. Jennifer, your your story. <laughs> Canadian mayor visits and commends Nigerian producing agege bread in oh, Canada. Very inspirational. We should clap for that guy. I saw that video. Very, very beautiful. So a Nigerian man, Olawale Oladapo, who resides in Canada, has become very popular for setting up a bakery that produces delicious agege bread. 
So he moved to Canada in 2016 and started the bakery in 2018. Now, because of the impact that he has made in his community, the mayor decided to pay him a visit. And we're seeing how um, different TikTok, TikTokers or TikTok influencers are posting videos about his bread and commending him and telling him that he's doing an amazing job. So they're basically influencing for him as well and telling people that it is important that he eats a gigi bread. Mm. That's good. But what, good. what makes a gigi bread a gigi bread? Is there something special? I think there's a special way that the mixture happens. You know, it's not your, it's not your typical poor, posh, you know, with all the milk and all. There's a, there's a mixture for a gigi texture. And I think he got it right, you know. So, and that mixture is just, you know, it's not too much. Because that's why it's actually affordable. It's, yeah. it's not too much. If they start to put all the milk and all those, your flavors and whatever, mm. it becomes expensive. Agege bread has a special mix. And, you know, once you get it, I'm very proud of the guy because he's going around. I mean, the mayor was very proud. I mean, if they had shown the video with the audio, he said, he said a lot of things. And the plan is, and what the Nigerian actually said, he said that particular state in Canada, they were also very, very receptive. And they really, really helped, you know, his business they, they were they were open to an entrepreneur coming in to grow mm. and that's where you see government comes in in everything yeah. so it's not just to say ease of doing business for people and mouth mm. you know this guy actually went there and now he's is delivering bread to almost the whole of canada so wow. the the mayor was even saying that they, they look forward to him exporting even out of canada, oh, canada. Wow. do you understand yeah, this is okay. a country that is ready for you to grow in their country mm. And with the mayor doing that and paying him a visit it's and then so making the video, it's like making him more popular, which of course will increase sales, increase revenue, there will be expansion. Yeah. Who will not be happy to live in such a community Absolutely. or a country? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And this is what, when we say government is ready for the people, this is what we mean. Yeah. Ready to support the Absolutely. people. So my story is a bit... Hmm. It's, uh, the heading says, Dad pays $80,000 to become gen a genderless dragon. So this story is a story about a 61-year-old father who no longer talks to his son because he became the first genderless dragon, and he uses pronouns like they and them. So the former, he used to be a banker. He covered his body in tattoos and piercings in a bid to become the world's first genderless dragon and is speaking out about the dramatic body transformation and for me this is a quite a, a transformation indeed because i i <laughs> can't imagine why you would want to go down in the world guinness book of records for the first genderless dragon what is the it, it just it, what's the motive behind it and this is you're doing it at 61. Um, he has lived his life. Yes. Why not do it when he did 12 years old? <laughs> <laughs> and before he became a banker. So I guess at this point he has maybe planning on retire or has retired and was just wondering what else he can do to either be famous or to have his name down somewhere for something that no one else what could. What crisis do we call this? Is, is this midlife? No, no he, is, has he has passed midlife. So he's after life <laughs> <laughs> it's quite it's quite fun and i can understand why well if my dad was to do that at this age i would also just i don't i, I don't know what kind of reaction i would have why he would my I, do I that. would not my father has he has mental stability this is this is this is coming from uh, what so i think that at some point in time you would think that there's a mental problem here or what is mm. it the attention? You would almost want to find out that it, that is it the attention? Is it that we don't come home enough? You you just want to you you want you want attention from somewhere else? You know, social media. And for me, I feel like this is one of the effects of social media. Social media is is creating and you know cultivating a kind of lifestyle that because he's a YouTuber, so he's trying to get more views. Obviously, so everybody will do anything. It, it now begs to question how far people would go just to be popular or to be seen as, you know. That's very disgusting. It's it's quite That's an artistic problem. transformation. Uh, uh, you what mm. Artistic no, no. transformation. No, no. For me, yeah. They it's, use the word metamorphosis. I, I try to picture myself in, in their, like, like, 
what part of their growing up would have you see the stories that they read like that would just you just think that ah, you know what i think i can become a dragon one day just be a genderless as in at least me i aspire to you know own things be a lifestyle but i don't understand genderless you know how it comes <laughs> about. i guess people just want to make names for themselves in different ways there has yeah. been he her and so now you say he's he did them did them Hey. But he, he's actually, for me, I, I think the, the truth is, for me, these things, when I see it, I just see somebody that is very unstable on the inside, right? That's, that's what I call it, because I don't know how to define what, what I just saw, right? Special. I mean, this is no issue of special. Special is different. This one, you, you have serious volcano erupting inside on your inside. <laughs> and yes, and you don't even know who you are, because I don't get it. I mean, the people that, you know, want to claim fame, they, they don't even do tattoos on their body, not to talk of uh, Was it not Kim Kardashian that said putting a tattoo on her body is like putting a, a bumper sticker on a Bentley, you know? Do you understand? Because she, under she understands that, you know, whatever it is she has, you now come and you all over your body change yourself to a, a creature. I think it's just going through this. There's, there's something wrong on the inside, very, very clearly wrong. I, I don't know what else to explain. Okay, so there was supposed to be a meeting between President Muhammad Buhari with the state governors, you know, under the APC that was cancelled. Um, the presidency source had said that this meeting was a call because of the nationwide crisis trailing the, the central bank of Nigeria's new note policy, right? Um, so all the governors that were elected under the old progressive congress, you know, um, had appealed to um to him to give i mean to start appeal for a meeting or something so he then appealed to nigerians to give them seven days so that they could resolve the crisis but that meeting now that was supposed to come they were supposed to come together and bring um like solutions or whatever like put heads together to find a way forward was cancelled so on that did they say why it was cancelled any particular reason yeah, not tell me why you is you know this, how they just and, and this all the is after the seven within the seven days that um, the president asked Nigerians to be patient while he yeah. has these discussions yeah. with MFLM. So, but he had a brief meeting behind closed doors with the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, that's um, Aminu Tambua of Sokoto, and the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum, that's Abubakar mm -hmm. Bagud of Kebi, and the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Mefele, and the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. That's um, Abdul Rashid Bawa. So hopefully, let's see what that closed door meeting would bring out. On that note, let's go on the break. When we come back from the break, we want to discuss our bankers. Stay with us. We'll be right back.